Hey everyone, so last night we went out and we saw Ridley Scott's Napoleon. Now we didn't review it last night because we were absolutely drained. <laughs> and we're going to get more to that, but I don't think it's drained in a positive way. Um, yeah, we'll get to that. But anyway, Napoleon, it chronicles the life of French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte and his relentless journey to power through the prism of his addictive and volatile relationship with his wife, Empress Josephine. So, yeah, directed by Ridley Scott. And uh, I think we're all pretty, uh, we know what he's done in the past. Uh, he's done some bangers. What has he done? Alien, uh, Gladiator. The Martian. The Martian, yep. And Blade Runner, obviously. But he's also done some stinkers. And those stinkers <laughs> are starting to become more and more frequent. We just reviewed Taika Waititi's Next Girl Wins, a wash director. Perhaps Ridley Scott falls in that washed category now because, yeah, we'll, we'll get to this. But anyway, um, Napoleon Bonaparte is played by Joaquin Phoenix, who isn't French, and also Vanessa Kirby plays Empress Josephine. So, Nayan, take it away. Uh, what do you think about the movie? And is Ridley Scott washed? Uh, I don't think Ridley Scott is washed, but he is getting there. The difference between him and Taika is that Taika is just doing stinkers after stinkers and, like, what he's trying to do with the comedy is just dry and, you know, it's yuck. But mm -hmm. with Ridley Scott, he usually has, like, a good movie or an okay passable movie and then a stinker and then, you know, mm -hmm. it goes on like that. It's not just, like, stink, stink, stink. Yeah. Um, and at least he's trying different things as well. You know, he's dabbled in sci-fi and now he's doing, like, sort of period pieces. Was it, did he do The Last Jewel? Last year? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. See, that was an okay movie. That wasn't mm -hmm. too bad. I think that got a little bit more hate than it should have. Um, but this definitely should get hated on because, yikes, yeah. it was a fucking more fest. <laughs> I was looking at my watch for, I think, at least three, four times, wondering when this film would end. It's a fucking long one, too. It's two hours, 38 minutes, and yeah. it feels like your entire life. Three and a half hours. No, your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I think there's meant to be a four-hour director's cut coming to the platform. I mean, I could be wrong about that, but I did hear about a longer cut. And I can't imagine what that would be like. God, good Lord. All right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the most interesting parts of this film is obviously the battle scenes, for obvious reasons. That's where we actually get to see Napoleon be Napoleon. Like, he's mm -hmm. always been touted as, like, the master strategist and stuff like that. And some of the stuff that you see him come up with is actually, like... You know, like, you just think, holy shit, that is so smart. Mm. Like, you know, it's in the trailers, or there was a clip, clip released of it, is where they pretty much um, directed the enemies into, like, a middle, thinking that they were all there, but they were actually on the outskirts, mm. and where the enemies were wasn't a frozen lake, and they just fired cannons yeah. into the lake, blast them and drowning them. That's so smart. So I think that, that aspect of um, this film was great, the battle scenes, but the rest of it is all, like, would you consider it po political, somewhat political, you know? Yeah, I mean political, yeah. but it does go through their relationship quite well. Yeah, it yeah. does, yeah. Um, my, I feel half this movie is just about him trying to spawn an uh, heir, yeah, pretty it's, much. It's a lot of the movie, yeah. <laughs> like, I feel that's more in it than the actual relationship and um, the battle scenes. But I think Joaquin Phoenix, he did a pretty decent job. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he can never go wrong in any film. Um, he yeah. still gives it his all. It's weird how you can hear British and like some European accents and then his accent sounds almost American. It's like, <laughs> and he's playing like this French like conqueror. It's just yeah. like, at least try and put on an accent. Yeah. At least, you know, <laughs> like, oh, that I think that was like one of the worst things I've heard. I was just <laughs> like, what? Why? <laughs> no trying. Um, I thought I thought Vanessa Kirby was good in it. Um, I really liked her. I mean, she's obviously played the um, the sad sort of lonely sort of wife. Mm -hmm. Kirby gets to see Napoleon, and like the only reason why she feels Napoleon is with him is to spawn her heir. Yeah. Um, but then obviously that unravels, and then there's obviously more to that than we see. Yeah. I just uh, love the way that you phrase that spawn. spawn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make a baby. <laughs> Chuck a bun in the oven and wait for it to cook. I don't know. Yeah, Take uh, pick. I like the last one. We'll run with that one from now uh, on. But yeah. She just wanted Napoleon to chuck a bun in the oven. Let it cook. Let, let it cook. Let him a, cook. Let it cook for a bit. But unfortunately, her oven was faulty, so he had to go elsewhere. 
enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought the production design was fantastic. It was really captured that seventeen to eighteen hundred sort mm. of era quite well, especially in terms of the costuming. I thought they nailed that, and also the lighting as well. How they used um many candles for it. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. that was good, and obviously the carriages and stuff. They really captured that sort of aspect to it as well. Mm-hmm. Score, don't even remember it, so I'm not even going to comment on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a boring, boring, boring movie for sure. Yeah, man. I oh, so much to uh so much to go through with this one. I'm I'm drained, man. It's been a tough week. I've had a next goal wins and now I have this. I don't like shitting on movies. I don't like being negative about movies. I want to love every single movie. But no, nah, this this ain't it. This is bad. <laughs> this is not good. Um, it's extremely, extremely dull. Like, just, there was no point in that movie where you start to get hooked. I don't even really know what the movie's doing. It's just, it's just showing his life, but it's not saying anything. Yeah, there's no meaning or theme, really. Yeah, it's just his life, and it's all without meaning. Uh, Even the battle sequences, I don't care about them because I don't care about a single character. Like, I, and I don't even know half the battles that just come and I'm like, okay, what, what's the purpose of this battle? Why is it happening? And what's the impact if they lose or if they win? I, I don't even understand that. It just happens. And then that's for like the majority of the movie. It, ju- it just happens. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I couldn't get over it. Uh, Napoleon uh, Bonaparte, he's, his life's too big and magnificent. If you're going to capture his life, you got to capture it from one angle. You can't do the whole thing in one movie. You have to focus on one specific piece of his life. That might be a way to do it. Or you can just try and capture that relationship that they had. But if you're trying to do all the battle scenes, if you are trying to do um, his, you know, rise to power, uh, then you can't do it all in one movie. Perhaps as a TV series, this would have been really, really good and captivating. The political talk is, is so dull as well. I don't even know what's happening. His rise to power was so fast. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, well, I guess he's uh, emperor now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that came out of nowhere. Right? Yeah, yeah. And like the, the entire pace and structure, I'm like, whoa, okay. Well, he's here now. He's fast. I don't even really know how he got to power. Um, it just kind of happened. Yeah, it did. And it happened really early as well. Yeah. So we don't really see him become like a... Mm. And, and then yeah. he loses his power and then he gets it back. And I'm just like... Oh. Yeah, it's... It's it's really, really weird. Just an awful, awful structure. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix, he's great. He couldn't do anything to save the character of Napoleon. Napoleon's so dull and boring. And, I mean, I just wanted any other character to come on screen. The relationship with his wife, if they just focused on that, I could have bought into this movie a little bit more. And I thought they did somewhat of a decent job just capturing the kind of the complexity. It's the kind of like, you know, the one thing that uh, Napoleon couldn't uh, get power over was his relationship and his, you know, love for, for that woman. But still, you know, through the ups and downs, they managed to, you know, just keep that kind of love there. Very fascinating. I wish they kind of just explored that a little bit more. Um, but they didn't. They just, you, they kind of like just did a shallow take on all the pieces of his life and expect us to buy into that. Like, oh, yeah. We can't do that. Um, so, yeah, he's uh, really Scott's a little bit washed. Just good. He did what House of Gucci last. Uh, that wasn't very good. Um, I completely forgot he did that. Yeah. And like just when you compare to what he's done before, it's, it's just not the same. Do so you, do you think he should just stick with sci-fi? Because clearly that's his niche. Because he's did House of Gucci last year and... Now Napoleon, which is all sweet. Yeah, I mean, he did Alien Covenant. He did do The Martian. And he did Prometheus. And Robin Hood. It's just a weird, weird body of work from him. I think he just needs to take his time. Like, House of Gucci and Last It All came out in the same year. Like, dude, chill. <laughs> and I, I don't like the way Ridley Scott talks. Uh, I don't know if you see the headlines and stuff that he says. But it's just really, like, he just says really dumb things. I, I feel, he says something about Martin Scorsese. You know how Martin Scorsese was like reflecting on his age and like, you know, he, he's coming to the end of his time. And so he's just trying to make, you know, stuff that is meaningful to him and not to what everyone else wants, like MCU movies or whatever. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, yeah, I don't really agree with that at all. I, I make four movies while Martin Scorsese makes one. And I'm like, 
Mate, Quality. I would every single time I would wait for a Martin Scorsese movie over your four movies. All right, so just just chill. And Ridley Scott's clearly talented. He's really got it good, um, and we can see that in the technical direction of this film. But yeah, he just he just needs to take his time with stuff, and I guess make better selections on what he wants to do. I think maybe the writing takes us down a notch. The direction on the technical standpoint. It's really, really incredible. It's really good. The cinematography is really good. I love the the color grading in certain areas. Just, you know, kind of the color grading soaks out a lot of color, just making it dull. And there's points where it's almost like black and white. It's really, really uh, interesting what they do. And the shot composition is really nice. As you said before, the, the lighting uh, is just impeccable, especially those indoor um, intimate kind of moments. Really yeah. well done. Um, and then, yeah, you move on to production design, costume design, art direction, all that stuff is just really, really well. Like, costuming was fantastic, man. For all those extras and stuff like that, and all this practical stuff going on, I thought it was, yeah, brilliant. It's the only thing really keeping me engaged in the movie. <laughs> uh, as for the score, a lot of it was, you know, uh, choir and orchestra kind of based stuff. Uh, yeah, it was just really slow. And I'm like, oh, I kind of wish they gave, you know, Napoleon like a, a signature theme. In a way, to just like, just a kind of maybe a sound or, or a quick uh, mot- motif, like yeah, just something so we could recognize when it was like his moment or something like that. But you know, Napoleon is one of the the greatest uh, generals in terms of military strategy. We don't really see it. Not really. We don't really see it. They they captured it well in that one scene, which the trailer gave away, so I, I knew exactly what was going to go down. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's captured brilliantly there. And but it's not captioning the other ones that much. Not really. Yeah, I wish they kind of just played one angle of Napoleon, not everything, because it's just such a big life to capture capture in one movie. So maybe the four hour will do justice, but I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the pacing is just awful. Otherwise, yeah, that's that's my thoughts. This is a hard movie to get through. I don't know if I would ever watch it again in my life. Yeah, um, when the Rudley cut comes out. No, I will not be watching this, <laughs> nor will I be reviewing it too. Um, yeah, no, it's just it's so long. It is unnecessarily long as well. Mm. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, it's kind of, it's a little bit gutting because I went into that like screening yesterday and I was, I was excited for it. I'm like, okay. You know, the reviews have been okay, but I was excited for the battle sequences and like, yeah. you know, the, the practical side of it. And we got it, but like, it's just, it's not enough. It's all about, you know, the writing and the pacing and the structure of the movie that really makes things work. You can have the great, greatest stuff in terms of, you know, cinematography and all the technical stuff. If you, if you don't buy into it, if you're not invested emotionally, it's, it's really worthless in my opinion. But yeah, no, I hope Ridley Scott does uh, better projects in the future. Well, Gladiator 2 is the next one on this horizon. Oh, well, it's coming from a Gladiator 1. Good movie. So... Nah, I said to you before, <laughs> I got to stop giving Ridley Scott chances. His movies always look like they're going to be good. House of Gucci looked great. It, um, he's a master of doing a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> he's directing his own trailers. Pretty much. No, it's because his movies look great. Yeah. They look great and, and they feel great. And then you watch it and it's like runtime. It's like, oh, God. Kill me. Um, Glad it is going to be like five hours long. Yeah, <clears throat> what was your? Because I'm no, I know that you were pretty excited for this. Maybe n- not after the Rotten Tomatoes reviews took that score down to sixty something percent. Yeah, so uh, well, how were you feeling about the movie prior to the reviews coming out? Were you excited for this one? Oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, he's um, thinking about the movie. That's why he's yawning. Yeah, I was <laughs> talking about Napoleon makes me sleepy. <laughs> um, I think I was a little bit more excited, a little excited for it. Um, mainly because I thought I was going to capture him being the, you know, the mastermind sort of aspect of Napoleon. Mm. Um, I didn't realize he'll go this deep into the relationship and yeah, um, his life. And mm. then when the when the first the first time that that score dropped, it was at around about eighty mm-hmm. percent. And I was like, "Yo, this is actually pretty decent." Like, yeah, here we go. Because I know when the trailer came out, we discussed it. And we're like, "Oh yeah, this looks pretty good." And a big yeah. contender for Oscar season as well. Mm-hmm. And then I think the next day or a couple of days later, it went straight down to six. And I was like, "What the fuck? That's like a twenty percent drop." Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's insane. <laughs> uh huh. Um, and then I was like, "Okay, there must be something wrong with it." And then after watching it, I can see why it's dropped down. 
Yeah. Um, I felt, yeah, I felt we both had the sense that we weren't really engaging with the movie at all. Yeah. Just yeah. failed to, to, it fails to capture you, I think. Yeah. yeah. And if you really appreciate the technical side of filmmaking, Ridley Scott does it better than most of the directors out there. Like, not many directors can pull off battle sequences like this. It's really, really good stuff. Uh, I think this movie would have been much better as a TV series. You know, 10 episodes, 40 to an hour long. You know, kind of had... You can push out production. a lot more. Yeah, yeah, you can take your time. Just, it just needs to be better writing, better dialogue and stuff. Uh, Napoleon's made to be a little bit weird sometimes. And it's just like, I couldn't get any kind of sense of the character. Yeah, the humor in this was really, really weird like an off-putting way like not because it was disgusting it was just like napoleon does something or does a face and just like am i supposed to laugh at that or i, I don't know what they were going yeah. for with it eh? yeah it was weird i'm like well, uh, is that what he was like in real life or is this the way walking phoenix is trying to do it i'm i was just so confused oh and historical accuracies napoleon bonaparte never shot a cannon at the pyramids like, that <laughs> never happened. And I'm glad Ridley Scott got called out on that. Why would you put that in the movie if it didn't happen? So stupid. And Ridley Scott was like, oh, I don't care about historical accuracies. I'm like... Then why are you doing these types of movies? For yeah, me? it was just... Oh, it was really, really bizarre. Um, but yeah, no, this one is a dud. As for Oscar season... I think it deserves uh, nods or to be in the conversation for the, some technical aspects. But I do think kind of the the uh, mediocre critic response is just going to halt all buzz to to get to that kind of nomination. And I think the campaign will be quite weak from there on out. It has a chance. We got to see how you know precursor awards go. But yeah, the any hope of uh, a best actor, best director, best picture, all out the window. Yeah, all the big ones I don't see. I'll probably only get technical ones. Yeah. It's the only one that has a chance. And... Yeah. Should we do scores? Let's do scores. Mm -hmm. I would give it a... <laughs> We've really got to think <laughs> about this one. You want me to go first? Yeah, sure, to break the awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's never awkward. Um, okay, I'm going to give it a 3.5. Okay. Sure, the technical side of things was very, very good. Probably some of the best this year, and I'll, I'll happily admit that. But if I don't care at all, if I would rather walk out and leave, I don't give a damn how good it is. We should have done that, eh? Huh? Pardon? So we should have done that. Oh, man, we, we should have. But we got to give it a fair review, and so, yeah, I'm giving it a 3.5. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. just uh, it's just boring. Yeah, that's yeah. basically uh it. Uh, that's our consensus for this movie. <laughs> but guys, we are done here. Uh, I think Napoleon comes out for you guys in a couple of days or tomorrow, wherever you're from, wherever you're watching or listening to this from. Um, so yeah, if you do go see it, because I know a lot of people want to go see this, do let us know what you think. Just comment down in the comment section or jump over over to uh. Twitter slash X or Instagram. Let us know your thoughts on this movie. It'd be quite interesting. If you really did like it, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, come on over and discuss with us because I would be very fascinated to, to know if this movie uh, kept you uh, entertained and hooked for the entire two hours and 38 minutes of the film's duration. Otherwise, you can head over to moviegains.com where we do our uh, box office projections. We do physical media lists, a whole bunch of other stuff. And we are doing our Oscar predictions as well. And uh, I will be editing those to make sure Napoleon is out of a lot of these. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> you guys have a fantastic rest of your day or night. Um, we are going to record another review now for Godzilla Minus One. And we do have The Color Purple uh coming on sunday as well no reviews up for that as well yet so that'll be interesting as well unless we're embargoed we might be embargoed all right guys <laughs> catch you later see ya keep bringing the hype peace see ya